Adamantarks here. I want to show you a nice little trick in Minecraft that I call a base in a box. I suppose you could also call it a base in a chest, but then you would lose the alliteration. So I like base in a box. Um, Alright, well you'll need to have achieved a few things uh, to be able to do this. It's, uh, I guess as such you might treat it as a more advanced technique. It's not really advanced, it's not complicated, but you'd need to be more advanced into the game uh, to do it. Uh, you've probably, you probably would have beaten the Ender Dragon, although there may be other ways, very slow ways, to, uh, to reach some of the other parts of the end, um, since one of the things you'll need is a shulker box. Um, and, you, and, and out of that shulker uh, shell, you'll create uh, what's called a shulker chest, or you could call it a shulker box. You look more like boxes to me than chest. But then again, this is Minecraft. Everything looks kind of like a box. Um, the other thing that you'll need will be an ender chest. So obviously, to make an ender chest, you will have, of course, already um, gone to the nether and gotten things like blaze rods and such to make the Eye of Ender to make the Ender Chest. But once you've gotten those things, um, there's this nice little trick that you can do. And if anything, maybe this video, if you haven't gone to the end or gone to an end city or fought any, um, any shulkers, um, this might motivate you to do so. It's definitely um, one of the most rewarding things in the game to do. So I'm going to show you these shulker boxes. First of all, let's talk about normal chests. Versus shulker boxes. Here's a normal chest. I guess we could also throw ender chest into the mix, couldn't we? Okay. A normal chest is obviously easy to make. All you need is eight pieces of wood. Um, and, and obviously, they're useful, and I have a ton of them. If I put something into a chest, some sticks, some dirt, some torches, some cobblestone, okay, you know this already, I'm certain, and you break that chest, Now, you get the chest, right? But obviously all of the other things fall out too and they're just all over the place. And if it's something like this, right, where the chest is just full of stuff, then your inventory just gets instantly spammed. So while a chest has its uses, there are certain things it doesn't do. Okay. Now an ender chest is cool because anything you put in an ender chest um, is stored in that ender chest or in any ender chest that you interact with. Think of an ender chest as actually being like a GUI in the game that just lets you access sort of an extra account level space that you have, right? So, um, so anything I put in here I can access from elsewhere. If someone else walks up to this ender chest and uses it, they won't see any of my things. They'll see their things that they put in an ender chest space. The, the drawback of an ender chest is this is all you get. The space is very limited, but I'm going to show you today how to overcome that drawback. A shulker uh, chest, is, or shulker box as it's called in the game, is actually um, pretty cool in the sense that it can do something that those chests cannot. Uh, so let's store the cobblestone, the sticks, all that other random crap that we had before. Let's put some of it into this uh, into this chest. And let's break this chest down. best way to break these down is with a pick. Okay. Notice, stuff didn't fly everywhere. In fact, it's still stored in the chest. So what makes an what makes a shulker box useful 
is that you can actually store stuff in it, break it down, and the stuff is still stored. So in essence, those four stacks or so of items are now stored in one inventory slot in effect. Right? So now I have expanded what I can hold in my inventory many times over. Each of these is like a whole small chest, which is basically my entire uh, main part of my inventory. So I'm actually carrying around now eight inventory areas full of things. All right. Now the problem with this approach is if I die, say I'm digging down at level 11 and I fall into some lava, stupid mistake, but it can happen, and I die, and all, and all my possessions, including my shulker boxes, fall into that lava, I lose those shulker boxes and everything in them. Now well, that sucks, right? The solution to this is, make sure I have my silk touch pick here, to, uh, to always carry around an ender chest. That way, when you keep your shulker boxes inside of your ender chest, you're actually overcoming the limitations of the shulker box and the ender chest at the same time by putting them together. You're getting the best of both worlds. So not only do you um, not lose your shulker boxes if you die, because you're keeping them in here, and you only access them when you're in a safe place, um, but when you die, the only thing you lose out of all of these things is obviously the uh, whatever you have on your person, of course, and you would lose the ender chest, and ender chests are easy to rebuild. It's only eight obsidian and an eye of ender. Um, so, uh, so essentially, uh, everything you have is not only safe from player death or from lava or something like that, uh, this is also a really good technique if you're on a PvP server. Now, I don't play a lot of PvP in Minecraft, but I know how it works. Uh, and uh, one of the things in PvP that's important is hiding your stuff from other people. You want your stuff in such a place that people cannot loot it, right? So if this is my super hidden base, um, someone can jump in here, find it, and steal all of my stuff or grief my base, right? They'd probably go here first and be like, oh, I'm going to take all that diamond, right? I'm going to take those emeralds. I'm going to take those uh, totems of undying. Um, and that's obviously annoying, and it's something people try to prevent. But perhaps the best way to prevent it is to have something like this set up. The other part of PvP servers, and one reason I play PvP in Minecraft, is that people cheat. Um, so even if you have that super hidden base, uh, people will get client side mods that let them uh, see through the ground or let them see through everything as if it's glass so they can find anything you have hidden. They don't stop, they don't think twice, you know, about the fact that that's cheating. <laughs> All they care about is winning um, and taking other people's things and just trolling other people. That's why I don't like PvP. Most of it's not honest. Um... Anyway, uh, if you have this, if 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 you're one, if you're a weird person and you like PvP anyway, uh, they can't really get around this. Um, the, these things are in your Ender Chest; they're on your account side. No one can access them. So uh, you can access them, and that's it. So uh, let's uh, break down the ender chest. Notice that when we break down the ender chest with a silk touch pick, right? Otherwise, the ender chest gets destroyed. Uh, notice that uh, my stuff is right there in my ender chest. Now, even if I die and I lose that ender chest, uh, all I have to do is go to another ender chest, and there's my stuff, right? Now, uh, this tutorial is entitled Base in a Box, so I want to show you a little method for setting this up in a systematic and very useful way. I'm also going to walk you through how to build uh, shulker boxes and how to uh, recolor them and rename them 
so you have a, a named color coded system. First, I'll show you the effect. Oh, another thing that's just cool about um, shulker boxes is that you can place them on any surface. You can hang them from a ceiling. You can uh, project them out from a wall. So, and it opens outward, as you can see there. Looks and they just look cool, right? Uh, you can break these down with a silk touch or a regular pick. Doesn't matter. Uh, like it does with an ender chest. So I'm just going to put these out. You'll notice if you're looking quickly that I've named these. And I've also color coded them. The natural default color that you find these chat, these uh, boxes in is purple. And they're naturally just called purple shulker boxes because they're made from shulker shells, which are always purple. Um, let's see. So first of all, um, I'll walk you through my system here. You can categorize these however you want. I've done much more complex configurations, but I find that this one works really well. One of the first boxes that I make a point of, of having is... Uh, is to have a box I call it torches and adventuring and it's all the on-the-fly stuff that I need when I'm out traveling in the world or exploring a cave or or mining out an abandoned mine shaft something like that you're gonna need a lot of light you are gonna need a lot of torches to keep yourself safe to keep mobs from spawning and so this is primarily committed to uh, to torches right and to make torches you need wood you need sticks and you you need you know you need a uh, coal right uh, and so the best way to store quote, quote unquote sticks is just to store it in its most natural form, the actual wood logs. So I keep about two stacks of logs in here. And the most compact way to store coal is obviously as blocks of coal. I can make a ton of torches. I can make, I can make chest and chest full of torches out of this, right? And that's a good thing. I don't know if I can make chest and chest, but I can make enough that just about any endeavor that I'm doing, I have more than enough torches. I also keep some fast torches on hand uh, here. So uh, that way when I go down into a, into a mine, all I have to do is open up, find a safe place, open up this chest, and I can make some more torches. Um, as you can see, I also have a bed in here uh, in case I need to sleep night away if I'm doing overland travel to prevent mobs from spawning. Uh, if I'm using my railways, but oh crap, I don't have a minecart. Somebody destroyed that minecart. I have a minecart for fast travel. And of course, for a similar reason, I have a boat. I keep these things in here. I also have chest for storage in case I need to store anything on the way that I don't care about, but I might come back to later. Uh, all right. Um, I'm not going to necessarily spend too long on all of these, but uh, this next one's called Weapons and Equipment. By the way, there's an I, there's sort of a, mm, a mnemonic device here to the coloring. You can use your own system, of course. I colored this one orange because orange sort of makes me think of torches. Torches seem to have an orangish light to them, right? This one's red. Red is the color of blood. Well, blood is what you get when you hit something with a sword in the real world. <laughs> um, so I use that to represent uh, weapons and equipment here. Um, you know, and that's so, uh, if, if there's a certain type of sword, like my cattle cooker sword, which I use for killing cattle and getting cooked beef, uh, and getting a lot of extra leather with the looting. So, for example, if I wanted to use that sword, if I'm out in the wild or something and I need some food, I've got that cattle cooker sword right there. Of course, as you can see, I keep some extra stores of steak here in my torches and adventuring chest as well. Um, blue is enchanting and repairing. This is actually a really important one. Um, notice, by the way, that I have a full enchanting setup here. In fact, let's see. 18 bookshelves, one enchantment table, a stack or really less of books, uh, some lapis lazuli. We have plenty of it and some torches. 
uh, right there is a full en enchanting room. And it's good to have an anvil as well to combine enchantments. And I keep some diamond here as well. Um, just in case I need to make another pick or another sword that I want to enchant. So I can enchant things on the fly. So no matter where I'm at, no matter what I'm doing, I could be in a, a deep, dark dungeon away from everything. And if I need to make an enchanted item, I can do it on the fly. Um, this is a major part of the idea of having a base in a box. And uh, Ore and Valuables. Uh, this is mostly just a way to protect some things that I really care about. If I'm on a PvP server, if I'm on a server where there are a lot of people, which I'm not here, um, and I don't want other people grabbing my stuff and using it, even if they don't do so with bad intent, it's still annoying. Uh, I, I, have my, I have the things that are really important to me protected here. I didn't put much in here because uh, this server is just me and one other buddy playing together as a team. And uh, he knows not to grab all of them all of my stuff so, <laughs> um but yeah that's uh it's a good working system nevertheless i do keep a core of things on me uh, blue is enchanting and repairing as i said green for whatever reason green reminds me of of uh, potions <laughs> so um so i have my alchemy set up here there's actually one thing i'm missing here i need to throw in a uh let me see if I have one over here. I think I used to have one in there. But I need to throw a, a brewing stand in there, actually. It's no big deal. I can make one later. I usually keep one in there so I can brew on the fly as well. Mostly this is for uh, you know, potions of instant healing, potions on the fly that I need. I also have everything I need to make a night vision potion in case I'm uh, un doing work underwater or something. Alright, and uh, finally, just random storage. Which these purple unnamed shulker boxes also act as that, right? So maybe this is one tier up. Maybe this can be just randomly stored things that, that I care a little bit more about. Right? Um, I also want to add this one, the ore and valuables. I use for things like, you know, if I'm mining, if I'm doing a mining run and I'm mining for diamond and coal and iron, I keep all of that in here and that frees up my inventory space so I can actually stay down below and I can mine for a really long time and just keep going. So I'm not having to constantly run up to base. And when I throw all of this stuff back in my ender chest, it's all protected. So I don't have to worry if I've mined, you know, four... Uh, veins of diamond, I don't have to worry now about falling into lava and losing everything I've gotten. Not that I fall into lava very often, but it, then it's not even a concern. Anyway, that's how that works. You can feel free to set these up however you want. Very quickly before we end, I just want to show you how to, to make one of these. So, um, first of all, let's cover how to make a shulker box. Once you go to the end and you travel out to an end city, plenty of ways to, to look up how to do that. Usually you beat the Ender Dragon, and then once you do, these little teleporter boxes open up. You throw uh, an Ender Orb into one of those, and it teleports you out to, a, uh, to the outskirt islands. And on those islands, you find things called end cities. They're very easy to spot, and they're very well lit in the distance. Uh, in those end cities, you fight a mob called a uh, shulker. They look kind of like these little boxes, right? And they pop out of the boxes. There are these little guys inside of the shell. And uh, they kind of remind, they kind of fight like hard hats, if you're a fan of the old Mega Man series of games. Let's see. How to build a shulker box. Okay, so what you're going to need, I'm just going to throw this, I'm going to use our crafting book here and throw this into the inventory slot so you can see it. So 
for every shulker chest you need or shulker box, you're going to need two shulker shells, the top and the bottom, and then you put a chest between them, and that forms a shulker box. So you want to collect these, generally speaking, in even numbers. So if you're running through an city, and let's say you've, you've beaten down 11 shulkers, or at least you've gotten, they don't always give them up, um, killing them with a looting sword is helpful for that reason. Um, so let's say, uh, just for the sake of argument, you've got nine shulker shells. You want to try to get a tenth. And then you can make five of these uh, shulker boxes, right? Five's not a bad number. Okay. All right. Once you do that, this is what you end up with. Now, obviously, we develop these a bit further. From there, all you have to do is you get the die of your choice. Um, let's see. What's one we don't have? I don't have a green one yet. So let's do a green one. Have a lime colored one. You go to the chest of your choice. Uh, or, excuse me, the crafting table of your choice. Or you can just do this in a regular crafting slot, actually. You throw in your die, you throw in your shulker box, and there it is, green shulker box. Very easy. Requires very few additional resources to do this. Okay. The next thing is to go to an anvil, and you can rename this. Right. We have plenty of enchanting levels. We have 23 levels right now. This is really easy to do. We're not really enchanting it. We're just using the, the uh, anvil to rename it, which gets treated as a type of enchantment. Uh, and it costs very little to do this. Instead of green shulker box, let's call this something like, um, I don't know, let's just call it storage. Keep it simple for now. Right? I can rename this later if I don't like the name I gave it all, I, I believe, anyway. Yeah, you can just load it back in and rename it. It'll cost you some more levels. but you know. So this isn't something that you can't reverse. And by the way, if memory serves... Let's just double check it. I don't want to give you misinformation in this video. I don't really think that I want a pink shulker box. But if I did, you can actually recolor it too. And it would keep its name. So you can reverse any of these things and retool this system at any time. Which is pretty cool. And the key is, right? you don't want to run around in general with these in your regular inventory. You want to keep them in this ender chest. It's really important. That's the main part. So I'm going to break these down. Here's another word of warning. One I've learned the hard way. Okay. Um, if you break one of the, if you break, let's say we just broke all these down and ran through and grabbed them all. That's actually a really bad way to do it. Because sometimes you break something and it pops off over here or something, right? And you miss it. You run off, you go do your thing, you don't think about it, you come back, it's despawned, it's gone. Right? That's very bad news, especially for something like this. Right? So what I want to do is do these one by one, and I want to count them. I want to consciously watch them and watch them appear in my inventory. See how it popped off way over there? That's weird. There it is, right? So I know I have that one. I'm going to put it right there, one by one. Looking for my uh, blue one. There it is, enchanting, right? Here's my adventure, travel and adventure, torches and adventuring, right? Here's my weapons and equipment. I'm looking at these as I go. I'm making sure I'm counting them. I'm slowing that down a bit more than I'd usually do it uh, because I want to show you. I know that I have all of those, right? And now I'm going to put them back in the ender chest. And that, my friends, is the base in a box. That will make everything you do in Minecraft 100% safer, 100% more efficient. Uh, you literally have an entire base right here in one inventory slot on your person. Pretty cool. Huh? 
Anyway, feel free to roll with this, do whatever you want to do with it. Uh, it's a useful tool, and uh, yeah, have fun with it. In the meantime, I'm Adam Antarx. This has been Minecraft Survival 102, and in the meantime, I wish you happy Minecrafting, and I wish you a great day. Goodbye. Adam Antarx out.